Hallelujah. Forever and forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you, fellow believers, for tuning in today. God bless you. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I have something today I want to discuss with you. Today, this morning, when I wake up in the early this morning, today is uh, Sunday, and I was hearing the message from uh, a guy who was talking about his testimony when he was um, in the church uh, they call Seven Day Adventist, you know. And in this Seven Day Adventist church, he was explaining that what they were oh, they were emphasizing was on the, the, the founder of this Seven Day Adventist, what they were emphasizing was about. Um, keeping the Sabbath day holy. Keeping the Sabbath day holy is was their real main goal. They were criticizing people who were not keeping the Sabbath day. And um, yeah, they said even when it was even uh, uh, Easter, they will not even celebrate Easter about the resurrection. They only celebrate Jesus Christ dead, but not about his resurrection. He was explaining. He was also explaining that so it, it kept him in a hopeless situation bondage just, that is he did not believe the word that was said that it is finished on the cross the finished work of the uncovery so they were trying to keep the law just like the jewish people you know so they were just the same like the jewish people keeping the law too because the jewish people keep the law sabbath day is very important for them so that that, that was what he said he was completely hopeless you know he did not know what to do again because the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Colossians, immediately when he was explaining that, he came to a point where he was explaining that most of the scriptures that used to trouble him a lot, that he used to like to use all the time was Psalm 51. He says that he will use Psalm 51 and always say, oh, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. He said, when he sits down backward, and just think backward what was happening then it was a completely darkness completely darkness so when i just lie down there and he said that i just laugh when he talked about that psalm 50, uh, 51. i remember one of my friends like that in germany who was using that psalm 51 also all the time oh my god we have to repent with psalm 51 we have to repent with psalm 51. you know he took she took that so important and so serious so as I woke up this morning, I immediately I just laugh about it. My daughter said, what are you laughing? So I went to in her room to tell her about the whole thing. So when I was telling her about the whole thing, I was telling her that when this, when this man was explaining this, what came to my mind was the book of Colossians. I know my daughter started to laugh me because she always said that Colossians, the book of Colossians is like, like they can write it in front of my forehead, like it's the most important scripture in the Bible. I said, yeah, of course. Because the book of Colossians says clearly, Galatians and Colossians, I was praising God this morning. I was like, wow, praise God that he used Paul to really to come and write this book of Colossians and Galatians in order to deliver us from the religious bondage. Because that, that church or that domination, they call the seven day Adventists, which there are many types like that they are all in spiritual bondage they are all in darkness so you let me just read a little bit because immediately while he was explaining that the scripture that came to my mind was the book of Colossians. Colossians 2 explains that very clearly the book of Colossians is one of my best book and especially Colossians 2. he explains here he says here Colossians 2 verse 6 let's read from verse 6 go down. he said as you have therefore received the lord christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him established in faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving beware 20 verse 8 is what i want to talk about he said beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the ruling powers of this world and not after christ it continues here in the other place again it says here in verse 16 it said let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of holy days or of a new moon or of sabbath days 
Because this guy was saying that at that time they used to judge people about Sabbath days. Always talk and say, oh, these, these people are not doing, worshipping Sabbath days. So it, if you can just look at it, they were keeping the law. Because keep the Sabbath day holy is one of the commandments that God gave the children of Israel and they could not keep it. They, they, were, they were trying to establish their own righteousness, not to follow the righteousness that you get through faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says now Jesus Christ now is the end of the law to everyone that believe. Amen. So now Colossians is telling us, they say, let no man judge you in meat or like what you eat and say, ah, oh, don't eat pork or don't eat this or don't eat that or in drink or don't drink this or that. He said, let no man judge you about that or respect of holidays because some people they say, ah, oh, we don't keep this kind of holidays. We keep this type of holidays. We did it. He says here, oh, new moon. Or Sabbath day, you see, because Sabbath day, they were also the Pharisees and the religious ruler. They were also accusing Jesus Christ that he was not keeping the Sabbath day. He was healing on the Sabbath day. You know, so that was one of the problems that the Pharisees have with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ told them and said that he said, the son of man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. He said, I did not come to uh, to disregard the law, I came to fulfill it. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. So when you are in Christ, you are not under the law again. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law for you. You have been delivered from the law. Verse 17 says, Colossians 2, 17, say, Wherefore, it says, which are all the shadow, all these things were shadow of things to come. But now the body is of Christ, because they were just all shadow types and pictures of things. That, but Jesus Christ now has come to fulfill them. Jesus Christ is the real thing. He said, let no man that beguile you, means cheat you or fool you, of reward, involuntary humility, worshiping of angels, introducing of all those things which you have not seen, vainly puffed up in your fleshy mind, and not holding the head from which all the body is joined and bound and having rudiments and minutes and clicks together, increased with the increase of God. He said, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ, if you die with Christ, that was the Scripture God was putting in my mind because he always put me in scripture. If you died with Christ from the ruling power of this world, why do are you living as if you are still living in the world? You are subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not. All these things are things to perish with their using after the commandments and doctrine of men. All these things are commandment and doctrine of men. Which is a which things have indeed a show of wisdom in real worship and humility, neglecting of the body and not honoring the satisfying of the flesh. If you died with Christ, why are you you died with Christ from the ruling power of this world? Because all this really all this is religious practices. Sabbath day, keep this Sabbath day, keeping this law, keeping this law. God told me in Finland, He said. All the other religion, Muslim, Buddhist, all kinds of different religions, they keep all kinds of law. He said, do they know me? I said, no, they don't know you. They keep all, they say they dress all kinds of stuff. Don't do this one, don't do that. The Lord told me they are all, they are all doctrine of men and they are all the, the my daughter call it cream white religion. Cream white religion is that type of religion where Everybody have his kind of funny philosophy as the book of uh, Colossians 2, uh, 8 says, Beware that any man, let no man spoil you through philosophy and deceit after the tradition of men and the rule and about the ruling powers of this world and not after Christ. You have to put your concentration only on Christ because the Bible says that for in him dwell the fullness of God's head bodily. And we are complete in Jesus Christ, who is the head of all principality and power. The ruling powers of this world, they are the one that from all this cream white religion that this man was saying that he had no hope. He was even planning to commit suicide, you know, until before he came to know Christ and know that it's not about anything that he does or works. He said there was a time he was like, oh, I'm not satisfied. Oh, I need to do more. Oh, I need to do something. This same situation happened to me also in Finland. 
how they were, I, I saw this vision where I didn't know what, what to do. When the Lord said, it is the end, it is the end. I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? I have to go now to go do something. The Lord was looking at me and said, look at my garment. I have blood on my body. I did everything for you. You know, all this cream white religion that the devil is formulated all over the world. All the preachers, they have not died. The Lord was telling me that they have not died. And if you have not died, you still think that you still have to perform something in order to satisfy God. But if you come to that revelation of uh, Galatians 2.20, Colossians 1.27, and also uh, Romans 6.6, 6, if you have that revelation, that is where you don't you can enter God's rest to know that you are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not you that live again. It is Christ that is living his life in you. The life which you live now is not your life. It is Jesus Christ's life. Amen? Because he continues even in the book of Galatians 2, 20, uh, uh, 21, that if there is a law or any works that could bring righteousness, then Christ died in vain. Amen? So the just shall live only by faith. Abraham believed God. It was counted for him for righteousness. So that is the only thing that can lead us to righteousness. What Jesus Christ finished on the work of Calvary. When he was saying that uh, situation, I say, yeah, he always prays the prayer. I say, oh, oh Lord, Psalm 51, don't take the Holy Spirit on me. I just bust big laugh this morning. I was so, I was so laughing. Because most of the preachers today are still in that same situation. They are standing on this side of the cross as if Jesus Christ has not gone to the cross. They are still standing watching like how the prophets were watching, how the disciples were watching that Jesus still has to go to the cross, like all the people in the old covenant. They are not standing on this other side of the cross to know that Jesus Christ went to the cross already. All the work has been finished since 2,000 years ago. The book of Hebrews say that the gospel was preached unto them but it was not mixed with faith, so they could not enter God's rest. The gospel was preached. The work was finished before the foundation of the world, but they could not enter God's rest because they did not mix it with faith. So that is the problem with the church today. The Lord was telling me that is the problem because if you know that only Jesus Christ died for you and went to the cross for you and you do not know you do not understand that when Jesus died, you died. When Jesus was raised, you was raised again. You will still be in your old man and stay in the flesh because you don't know that the old man died. You don't know that that means her flesh is dead. But the Bible of the, uh, the mystery is in the book of Romans 6 that we died with Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20 also said we died with Jesus Christ. It's not us who live again. Jesus Christ said in the book of 2 Timothy, if you die with him, then, you know, we will suffer with him. He will suffer. We will live with him. Amen. And if we, we, we deny him, then he cannot deny himself. He remains faithful. So we have to know that when Jesus Christ died, went to the cross. We ourselves went to the cross. When Jesus was raised on the dead, we ourselves was raised on the dead. The Bible says in the book of Romans 6, 3, it says, don't you know that? Many of you that were baptized into Christ were baptized unto his death. So that was the death that all of us died. So if you are a preacher, you don't know that you died with Jesus Christ. Your old man is still alive. Your flesh is still alive. So you are still walking in the book of Galatians 5. That is saying that the works of the flesh is fornication, adultery, sorcery, all that kind of stuff. So you are still in the flesh because you have not died. So the Bible says anyone that is dead is free from sin. Read the book of Romans 6. It will give you all this explanation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the thing that I was just looking today. I was just laughing. We are not under the law. Romans 6 is saying that we are not delivered from the law. Sin cannot have dominion over us because we died to sin. We are living now unto righteousness. By his wounds, we were healed. I hope you get something today. So that was just my thoughts about what I was hearing. This man was talking about uh, the seven day Adventists, how they were keeping the law, keeping the Sabbath day. That was their main goal to just keep the Sabbath day. So they were even threatening them in the church and say, if you don't keep the Sabbath day, you are going to hell, all that kind of stuff. So you see, then that means Christ dies in vain, you know. So they were trying to keep their own law, 
keep their own righteousness like the Jewish people. Uh, you know, where God has established his own righteousness through his son, through the blood that was shed on the cross. And he has justified anyone that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many criminal religion like this all over the world that is leading people astray. And I hope you get something today from this and learn that you are not under the law. You have been free from the law. You are delivered from the law. That, you know, Mr. Flesh, Mr. Law died when Jesus Christ went to the cross. So we died to sin with the Lord Jesus Christ. We died to sin. You are not a sinner anymore. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because God has made Jesus Christ your righteousness, sanctification, redemption. And also your wisdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus. I hope you learned something today. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. If you are in any bondage, I hope that God gives you wisdom, revelation, and knowledge. That's my prayer. That you come out from any occulty group, any gang, any witchcraft church, any demonic church, which is a cream white religion. We are manipulating people, putting them in bondage to know that you are free. There is no condemnation again for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law which we have now in the spirit, in the life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We are now justified by the blood of the cross in the name of Jesus Christ. Read the book of Galatians, Colossians, Ephesians. It will give you a lot of explanation, especially the letters that Paul wrote in the name or even the book of Romans in Jesus' name. It will tell you your inheritance in Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you are free from the law in Jesus Christ, mighty name. You don't have to keep any law and any regulation again except the law of love. Amen? That fulfill, that is the law of love. That is the most important law in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God forever. Thank you for listening. If you are a new uh, person in this channel, and uh, you can put, uh, you can put the, uh, ask me your questions down uh, below, any question that you have, and also tell me your own thoughts, what you think about if you are a Seventh-day Adventist or you are, you are a member of the Seventh-day Adventist uh, congregation before, what your experience is and your testimony, you can also write it down below. I will be very grateful in the name of Jesus. And I hope that God gives you today, remove that glasses from your eyes and that you can be free from that bondages of many churches like that, Catholic Church, Seventh-day Adventist, um, uh, Olumba, Olumba, or, or the other one they call it, um, how do they call it, Momo, um, they, they, so they say the saints of latter days, saints or what, um, the uh, Jehovah Witness, all of these are courts and they are all demonic sects. We are putting people in bondage, holding you in captivity in one way or the other, keeping you in one law and telling you that you are not going to heaven and this and this and that and that, where the grace of God has really set us free. The Bible says in the book of Galatians 5, it says, stand in the liberty in which Christ has made you free. Don't entangle yourself again with the yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. That is why Paul was fighting with the Galatians, was explaining the Galatian church and to us, uh, if you read the book of Galatians, that is the real thing that God was explaining. Because of for a fake a gospel, fake brothers and sisters, all kind of fake pastors, what is happening in the church today, in the last days, I pray that God deliver you from any blindness and any manipulation in the name of Jesus, from any religious group and religious church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are new here also, you can subscribe down below. God bless you in Jesus' name. I will see you in the next video in Jesus Christ, my name. This is called, this uh, session I was doing is, uh, is talking about uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church and uh, other all cream white religion. This is all about cream white religion that is putting people in bondage all over the world in Jesus' name. Thank you. Bye.